Welcome back to Marketville, a wonderful place to live and work. A town just like any other. But wait, something is missing. Where are all the street lights? They used to have street lights. Now it's very dark in Marketville. And that can be a problem, especially in the winter months when it gets dark earlier. Just think about kids walking home from baseball practice in the dark or drivers trying to safely find their destination in the dark, or people walking their dogs around the neighborhood, all in the dark. I think you're beginning to see the problem. Street lights are just one example. There are many goods and services that Marketville provides, or used to provide, that benefit everyone. We call these public goods. But the provision of these public goods can be a problem when the market fails. Let's find out why. First up, let's define what we mean by a public good. It is a good or service that is available to everyone in a market and is difficult to take away from anyone. Public goods are non-excludable and non-rivalrous. Sound complicated? Let's break it down. Non-excludable means that no one can be prevented from using the good. Take a moment to consider how street lights are non-excludable. Well, can you prevent certain people from using them? I'm not sure how you could do that even if you wanted to. Like other public goods, street lights are accessible to all. What would it be like if public goods were exclusive? You might have to pay each time you bike down the path to school or sit on the bench at the park. That could definitely impact your daily life. What about non-rivalrous? Well, a rivalry implies a competition between parties for something, right? So non-rivalrous means there is no competition. That means my use of a public good does not take anything away from your ability to use it. Think about roads, for example. My driving down the street does not prevent other people from driving on the same street. What about streetlights? How are they non-rivalrous? Well, let's say I go for a walk after sunset and use the streetlights to help light my way. And then you take the car and go out to dinner. Have I diminished in any way your ability to use the same streetlights to see better? Of course not. Public goods are all around us. Can you think of some more examples? You might have thought about roads, parks, clean water, or a hundred other things. And Marketville is chock full of those public goods. And all of those public goods are available to everyone, regardless of their income or wealth. How do you think the fact that public goods are non-excludable and non-rivalrous impacts their profitability? Take a moment and record your thoughts. Well, because they are non-excludable, they are open to everyone, and it's tough to charge for their use. Could you charge this boy to ride his bike? I couldn't. So that generally makes it pretty difficult to generate significant profit. So if they're not going to generate profit, who usually provides these public goods? And why would they? Well, in most cases, the government steps in to provide them or ensure that they are provided, even in a mostly free market economy. Why? Because public goods are often essential to the well-being of the community and its members. Public goods are beneficial for so many reasons. Let's take a look at some specific benefits. Many public goods, such as clean air, safe drinking water, and public health services, are crucial for maintaining public health and safety. 
They can lead to a healthier population and reduce the burden of healthcare costs on individuals and the government. For example, having streetlights improves visibility for drivers and pedestrians. This leads to fewer accidents. Public goods also often include services and infrastructure that contribute to environmental protection, such as national parks, wildlife reserves, and pollution control measures. These help in preserving natural habitats and biodiversity. Museums, libraries, and cultural centers are all examples of public goods that play a vital role in promoting education and cultural enrichment. Public goods like parks, community centers, and public squares provide spaces where people can come together, share experiences, and build a sense of community and belonging. But like all things, public goods have their downsides. The biggest one, of course, is that somebody has to pay for them. We'll get into that more in a bit. Another major drawback is the potential for overuse. When something is free and available to everyone, it can get crowded or worn down, like a popular playground or a public beach during summer. But sometimes we overestimate how much we need a public good. For example, Marketville might build six new parks when they really only needed three. This can lead to wasted resources that could have been better used elsewhere. Maintenance is another challenge. Public goods need care and upkeep. Broken streetlights and roads need to be repaired, and that costs money. Somebody has got to pay all those costs. Finally, since public goods are typically managed by government entities, there may be issues with the quality and reliability of those goods and services, and they are subject to political plans and decisions. Okay, let's take another moment to reflect. Say Marketville's public library is facing budget cuts. What impact do you think this would have on the community? They may not be perfect, but we really do need public goods. Take Marketville's missing streetlights, for example. For the safety and welfare of the town, Marketville needs those lights. So why don't they have them? Take a moment and reflect. Why do you think a town like Marketville might start losing essential services like street lights? What factors might contribute to this? Well, it's mainly due to two reasons, the challenge of raising sufficient funds and the problem of free riding. First up, funding. Providing public goods costs money, and these funds usually come from taxes, but raising taxes is often unpopular. And there's always a debate about how to allocate limited resources. Some politicians might prioritize projects that are more visible or popular, sometimes overlooking less glamorous but essential public goods. In some cases, there's a lack of awareness about the importance of certain public goods, like disaster preparedness. Without public support or demand, these goods might not get the attention they need. This leads us to another classic problem, free riders. If public goods are freely available, many people can enjoy them without contributing towards their cost. They get a free ride. Take those streetlights, for example. They're expensive to maintain. Cities and towns have to pay for them out of their tax money. But drivers from all over the city, state, and country pass through and utilize the streetlights without really contributing to their upkeep. They are free riders. When many people choose to free ride, it can lead to underfunding of the public good. This is because the total contributions collected may not be enough to cover the costs of providing and maintaining the good. Let's recap what we've learned about public goods. They're essential for our quality of life, from the streetlights that light our way to the parks where we relax and play. 
They are non-excludable and non-rivalrous, which means we all get to enjoy them. But these goods don't just magically appear. They require funding, planning, and maintenance, a task often complicated by limited resources and the free rider problem. Sometimes these challenges result in the underprovision or insufficiency of public goods, and that's no good for anyone. In our next lesson, we will look at solutions to address this underprovision. Until next time, this is B reminding you to keep investing in yourself and your future one lesson at a time. See you next time. Hey, hey.